Thank you for tuning into Straight Talk Vermont Show. And I'm so proud today. I feel so excited and happy. Um, so before, before we um, talk with our guests and, um, and my co-host, um, I just want to let the audience know that we have our um, Art So one, one of our programs, Art So Wonderful, since 2003. We have our art gallery in the University mm -hmm. Mall. Oh, how incredible is it? It's called Art So Wonderful Gallery and Performance Center. We've got a big stage. It's like 8,000 8, square feet, you know? So, oh, God, we're about to do some incredible stuff there. So I want everybody to come there. It don't cost nothing to come. Mm -hmm. Come around, check out all the different type of media of art from, from um, Vermonters, all the art in there from Vermont, all across the state. And it's like, you know, I sit in there and I look at that art every day. I'm like, wow, how did they think of that? How could they... You know, I mean, what inspired them to put to do that? And so it's incredible. So come in there, bring your kids, and just you know, it's um, um what is it? It's um, um, Wednesday through Saturday, eleven to five. And you hopefully I see you. if you see me, say you saw me on, on and then when I was talking to a congresswoman, and I'll give you some. <laughs> so, so all right, so man, wow, oh, here we go, here we go, here we go. So here we go, congresswoman um, Becca Ballin. Thank you for being a guest on Straight Talk for my show. You know, we have some incredible, I think our last guest was um, on our show was um, Kesha Ram. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, she, she, yeah. yeah we had um, a lot of people on our show, you know, that, you know, like kind of like we do some of the work you do. But we have like the catamount dancers and all kinds of things. But, um, man, it's so an honor because I, you know, I'm seeing different type of ways through all the years. I've been in Vermont since 89. Um, we, you, you and I have always kind of worked on some same type of platforms, you know, because we, we work for the people who we serve for real. The boots on the ground, for real, for real, for real, you know what I'm saying? And that's you. That's how I, that's how I know you. Thank from, you, Bruce. And I'm so happy and excited. And but, Bruce, um, we, I'm going to tell you. We have, Bruce, we have known each other for years, so please call me Becca. I, I appreciate that you called me Congresswoman. I am a Congresswoman, but please call me Becca. Yeah, Becca, Becca. Uh, well, you know, you know, I'm a human rights commissioner, right? For, yes, I do, know, and I want to talk to you about that. Our new executive director of Big said, Bruce, you know, you know, so we're gonna be hanging out on September 12th down on uh, Waterfront Park. There's a big event down there. Yeah. So what you? Okay. So here's my co-host, <laughs> Gina. Oh, check it. This young lady. I'm sorry, but I'm going to call you a measurement from our programs from years ago. Come on, you tell the story just quickly. Yeah, so my name is Jaina Ossoff. I'm the lead organizer with the Free Hair Campaign. I actually ran into you at the 4th of July parade. I, oh, you remember? I remember. Oh, that's amazing. I remember you were talking to me about mass incarceration. Yes, okay, I'm so yes. glad you remember. Well, I've actually been a participant in Bruce's services since I was like, probably 14, maybe even younger. So it feels like a very full circle moment to be here with him today talking to you, so. Well, you, another part of it too is like, when we'll talk about it a little bit, the work you do, and like I said, yeah, every time I see people like you who've been through my program, I say, yeah, I, you, you got that from, part of that from me because, <laughs> you, know, you know, helping people in the community based on, you know, just serving, serving, doing community service. And that's, you know, I don't know if you, I think, uh, yeah, I, I could figure that you was going to do this type of work. <laughs> so why don't, you, why don't you ask our, I, mean, I got to call you Congresswoman. Okay, Becca. Okay, whatever you know, is comfortable dang. for you, Bruce. Yeah, I know. You yeah, so stuff? we have some questions for you. Um, okay. With time running out, I don't know if we'll be able to hit them all, but I just want to say you have an incredible platform ranging from LGBTQIA rights to housing, addressing the opioid crisis, like great things. Um, as you know, Bruce does a lot of diversity, equity, inclusion, and I do stuff around incarceration. So maybe jumping right to it, um, what kind of work do you have right now that's focused on those areas like diversity, equity, and inclusion, or helping incarcerated folks? Yeah, I really appreciate it. It is, um, it's, when I think about the, the through line of, of my work, both as a, um, a teacher and then as, as a legislator, it has always been about trying to relieve suffering. So how do you um, make life better for people? And, and we do know that when we improve the lives of people through higher wages, through better housing, through better environment, <clears throat> through better education, 
you are uh, dramatically uh, improving the chances that people can have a healthy, fulfilling life and have done certainly work here in Vermont around the way people, uh, I, I did work on the Fair and Impartial Policing uh, Committee for a long time around uh, traffic stops. And I don't know if you saw, it's very timely, I don't know if you saw the the news that came out this week of Connecticut and the uh, Connecticut State Police had been falsifying uh, records of their their traffic stops wow. and skewing the data so it looked like they were pulling over more white drivers than people of color. And so uh, my point in bringing it up is there's still so much work to be done hmm. at the local, the state and the federal level on uh, the justice system. Um, I've done work on uh, issues related to um, qualified immunity. I know that so these issues are, are also resonant at the, at the federal level, uh, but I want to be really clear uh, with you about this moment that we're in right now, that um, we have uh, a, an entire conference within the Congress, the Republican conference, that is not grounded in fact or reality and is not thinking about regular people on the ground. So the fight that I have to do day in and day out in committee is actually about trying to pull them out of upside down land. And I have to go toe to toe with people in committee um, on LGBTQ rights. They are trying to drag us back to the 1950s around how people of color are treated in this country, the way LGBTQ people are treated in this country and the way the poor are treated. And so it is, unfortunately, I feel like at this moment we're in this holding pattern because as, as Democrats we're in the minority in the house, it's very difficult to move. Sorry, I'm getting a feedback. Hmm. She's getting feedback. So I'll try again. I will try to do do it despite the, the feedback, which is that we have to continue to push to move progressive legislation. That is always has to be uh, the North Star for us. And we also, unfortunately, at the very same time, we've got to fight the battles in real time in these committees because the world that I live in, the world that I want to see for this country long term is not necessarily the world that um, some of my political opponents want to recreate. And it's it's terrifying, honestly. So, so um, Becca, um, so, so I, myself, I'm, I'm still on um, Vermont State Police, fair and partial policing in the com community for years. Yes. And also I was on uh, um, the committee to help um, data collection, you know, um, yes. on Common Alliance. <laughs> um, that we, uh, and so, and so uh, uh, Stephanie Seguino, she, she did all, the, all the, um, the measurements for us, right? And so what I'm going to say, and I'm a little still sad, I don't know if it's changed any, but uh, Vermont State Police uh, uh, stopped 85% um, um, of African Americans. And can you imagine that? 85% of African Americans are stopped by um, state police. Guess what? 85% of African Americans or black or people of color are stopped by Burlington Police. Come on, man. I mean, it's only... I don't know, how, what's our measurements here? 0.3%, so I don't know. And we yeah. get stopped 85%? Wow, Becca, what's up? Yeah, I mean, this is the thing, Bruce. Explicit and implicit bias are real. And, and when I say I'm trying to uh, bring people back from upside down land, I serve with people who do not believe racism is real. I serve with people who believe that the, the queer and trans community are trying to corrupt our children and, and uh, literally destroy the democracy from within. And so unfortunately, um, you know, a, as you and I both know, you can work on these issues for years and you can feel like you're not having any impact, but we have to continue to do the work and, and demand better, demand better of our data collection and demand better of our analysis of that data. And honestly, what we're trying to do, Bruce, and I know, um, you know, your guest is doing the same thing. We're trying to change culture mm -hmm. and trying to change culture is, you know, it's a very uh, difficult task and we, we always have to be taking the long view. So you have to do uh, the day to day struggle in real time and you have to be planning a flag for the future where we're trying to get to. And. Um, you know, I would just love one of the things that I wanted to ask you both, because it's something I think about a lot. How do you keep 
your hope. You're both hopeful people. You're both joyful people. How do you keep your hope and joy alive when it feels like we're backsliding? Tough. It's a tough one. Um, personally, for me, I get a lot of strength from our community, even yeah. though the greater society may have some of these backwards views you're talking about. Burlington yeah. and pockets around Vermont have always been hubs of radical thinking, radical mm -hmm. action, radical thought. So just having so many people back free her and the ideas of prison abolition gives me mm -hmm. hope. And especially, I'm sure you have a lot of work with youth, just the yeah. way they think. they. They think we're all so nuts, you know, like they're like, how do you guys not buy into all these ideas? It should be clear that this is logical and the right way for society to go. So honestly, mm -hmm. the community gives me a lot of hope. Yeah, I'm so glad you mentioned the youth. That is my team in D.C. knows that if I'm feeling a little bit uh, uh, depressed or anxious, um, they know what they need to do is give me a time when I get to listen to and talk to youth mm -hmm. and they just think, Oh, we got, we got to bring, we got to bring some students in, whether it's high school students, middle school students, college students, that it always gives me more hope to hear what they're thinking about um, and, and what, what they see in the work that I'm doing and, and what they'd like to see me doing. And I always leave those meetings much more joyful and hopeful. Mm -hmm. weird. It's weird. You know, I remember like Roxanne and Pino was like, yeah, I'm the pie piper for youth, you know what I mean? Because we always, you know, we yes. work with youth. We have youth advisory boards and blah, blah, blah. And um, I'll tell you what, I love those youth, you know what I mean? See, you sit around listen to them and how they talk. They are so intelligent and smart, you know. You know, just, you know, just like, you, you know, you and you were in our group. You, I don't know if you noticed, but I'm the one who opened up all those youth centers in every large mall in the state, chill out centers and in mm. Los Angeles, Fairhaven, and you know, those living rooms. That was me. I opened those stuff for free for youth and families. You know, mm -hmm. and our measurements were like real, really good. You know, because if they're in our place, that costs them absolutely nothing. Mm -hmm. Guess what? They're they're not uh, doing drugs, alcohol, tobacco. They're in a safe place. We're having a healthy outlet. You know what I mean? And so we know that if it's there for an hour, we know that. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. and that measure right there, you can't even measure that. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so that's why I opened those places. Plus, my youth advisory board said we need to open something. But um, man, you know, I'm just so excited. You know, when you talk about youth, man. That's my thing. You know. You know mm -hmm. you, Look at you. Look at you. <laughs> what, geez, Chris, you're out of college and everything, huh? Yeah. She yeah. was like, what, 14 or something in my yeah, 14. 14 years now she's great. graduated out of college and, and she's back working with, you know, we're working together on stuff. You know, isn't that awesome? Yeah. Rebecca, that's, cool. that's, that's oh, it is awesome. I mean, that's and incredible a, a question that I have uh, for both <laughs> of you, when, when you think about, like, when you look at a six months or a year out, for the goals that you have for yourself. And as you said, you know, so beautifully, it's all about community. It's all about creating uh, an environment and getting, um, you know, hope and, and ideas from the people around you. I'm just wondering what, you know, what do you hope to see in the next six months for a year within your own lives? Because um, mm -hmm. I think that always helps me to, to, to get inspiration from, from other people, what they're trying to get done. Yeah, that's a tough one for me. Let's give me a, you answered it already. So did you answer that question already? I actually have more thoughts on this. Well, go question. ahead, because okay. I'm going to think about it a little bit, because the, uh, Peter Covell asked me the same thing. Bougie, you do so much for everybody. What about you? You know, and so mm. I'm still trying to answer mm. that question. That's, He's right. Go you got to yeah. do self-care or you can't, you can't continue mm -hmm. the fight. He's, Peter Clavel right. is absolutely right. Mm -hmm. Go right ahead. Add on. My goals are community-centered. I don't know if this is what you're looking for. But yeah, yeah, what? Okay, Tell me about coming it. up in January, I'm not sure if you know, but there are plans to build a woman's prison. And I personally think that would be detrimental for our communities, especially following the flooding and the fact that we have a very high unhoused population, I think we'll just be speeding up that pipeline into prisons. So personally for myself, I would like to see the prison construction pause and see the state invest in alternatives to incarceration. Like, for example, I think the longest inpatient treatment center we have available is Brattleboro Retreat, and folks can only stay for two weeks when they have substance use disorders. 
And to me, that isn't really addressing the problem. We also have like Soteria House, Alyssa. Mm -hmm. Those are yeah. emergency services that keep people from being institutionalized. We don't have enough of those. So mm -hmm. I would just like to see Vermont go on this path of alternatives in decarceration personally. Um, I think there's so much we can do with elder parole, ending cash bail, second chance legislation, a lot of amazing things that I would like to see for our community. Yeah. And I'm so glad you mentioned the piece about, um, about mental health. Mm -hmm. uh, we know that many incarcerated people, not just in Vermont, but across the country um, have co-occurring uh, mental health and substance use issues. Um, disorder issues. And so we do need to be thinking more holistically about it. Yeah. And uh, we've done some good work. There's there's always more to do, but I'm, I'm glad you mentioned Soteria. I've always been so impressed with the work that, that they do there. And we need more places like that. 100% agree. Mm -hmm. How about you, yeah. Bruce? Well, <laughs> man, straight talk for my program. I'm, I'm the founder of that program and went to all the jails in the, in the state, you know. And so it's a, it's a kind of program, like go with thinking errors and patterns in conflict resolution exercises, everyone in drug and alcohol work. And then those who, um, you know, seem to be, um, seem to be you understand, so you're thinking errors and patterns, you're like, <clears throat> they get, oh, I'm gonna refer to them, like um, Distance House and Mandela's House and St. They ask me, Bruce, <laughs> who in your group you think can come, you know, because it just went some reference. I, and I'll say it honestly, and I tell those people in the group that if they just identify their thinking errors that put them at risk, you know, and um, just learn new you learn new interventions, don't react to the, um, you know, the situation. Just kind of think about it first. That you'll be all right, you know what I'm saying? I say it's hard sometimes, but once you start it, you'll be, it'll continue, it'll, it'll hit your automatic system management. You know? And so um, we had some very successful, that's, that, that program started in 2003. And the last, before the COVID, we did at Marble Valley. I, I, I was a facilitator. I had girls, some interns from um, UVM helping me at um, CRCF. But um, so, the, the, so I guess what I'm trying to say is that, um, wow, with everything you said, you know what I'm saying? And they just, you know, like the reentry program, I, I'm, off one, I'm sorry, but every time I think of something, I, I've been a part of it. Like the reentry, a reentry program that we created years ago, a job and a place to live, right? That was the name mm -hmm. of it, you know? And then everything was working good. We was in the jail, we was in, uh, people was mm -hmm. doing interactive meeting with the community on the TVs that they was supposed to um, work with, you know? And then um, when they get into the community, if they, well, first of all, if they want to do this program, then they'll get like three months out early, you know what I'm saying? So um, if they did the um, reentry program. And then mm -hmm. everything was working good, but then it kind of, you know, I mean, some things, situations, you know, high risk, you know, was happening in the community with um, people who was in those apartments, but they dropped all the apartments. When they did that, people was behind on getting you know, out on their minimum, and um, it just, they, they dropped the apartments. That's, that was, that you know, I could understand the, you know, the, the logistics about it, but damn, it messed up the whole program. It was a job and a place to live, you know. Yeah. But anyways, so, um, so, I, you know, those people, all they need is information about how they can get better. When I was going to uh, facilitate the um, Straight Talk Vermont program in those jails, they would have, um, like, um, all the brochures in the lobby, right, the 211 and mm -hmm. all, these, all, these, all these things in the lobby. And I'm thinking, so when I come in, I grab all, you know, a lot of those things and bring it to them. How in the world are they supposed to go into the, see those things in the lobby, mm -hmm. man? You know, so, you know, mm -hmm. and I would say to them, Listen, let's write these providers. This is their job to, um, to uh, talk with you. So one day, if you don't know what day you get out of jail, one day I will be getting out of jail and then and I'm going to need some housing. And then um, and they will start doing that. You know, they start writing them because they get the stamp, they get the free stamps and the um, letters. Yeah. And so um, people will respond back to them saying that, well, I penciled you in, you know, I mean, let's stay, stay in touch with each other. So that was really good, you know, but how would they ever going to get to the brochures and to help themselves. I said, mm -hmm. I said, you got to help yourself in the lobby, man. So, so a lot of things like uh, what, you, what you're saying, go ahead, what, what else you got to say about your program? Because- No, it's okay, I just have the questions you can- Go ahead, okay. no, go ahead. So, right. One thing, little, Bruce, little, little that how many minutes I want to make though? sure that we, you know, that I make explicit, because I think you're absolutely right, that the, the housing crisis in Vermont is impacting everybody, but it's impacting the most vulnerable the most mm -hmm. right so you, you because of lack of housing because uh rents are are so high and of course you know i was just talking with some folks from barry this morning they lost 10 percent 
of their housing in Barrie in, in that flooding event in July. Yeah. And so when you have people uh, who are incarcerated and you're trying to uh, you know, give them an opportunity to do a restart and there is an access to uh, safe, affordable housing for them, it's, it's very difficult to get yourself uh, back on your feet. How can you um, expect somebody to um, carry uh, the weight of having a, a job and showing up every day for that job when they have no place to be at night when they don't have safe and affordable housing. So it's all it's all intertwined. So the work of you know making life better for people does start with those those basics of of food and housing. And it also has to include mental health supports and job training. That's the other thing that I know, you know, so many um programs over the years have fallen by the wayside in terms of getting people additional training when they're they're incarcerated. That should be um, absolutely required for, you know, every uh, site of incarceration that people have an opportunity to get job training and skills so that they are um, in a position to be the captains of their own lives when, when they are, uh, when they've served their time. So, um, you know, we have maybe one or two questions, but really short ones. Um, so how I feel to be out there, you know, in Congress sitting out there in your, your desk and, you know, you got these staff, you see all, all your constituents, all, you know, all the other Congress people, you know, um, senators, you know, y'all walk past each other and then they like, you know, I know Amara, you because you're from, number one, because you're from Vermont, right? And then, yeah. You know, and then plus you're smart and you're a congresswoman, a long congressperson. So how, how do you feel? You know, every day, honestly, Bruce, every day I have to, I have to pinch myself. I, I walk close enough to the Capitol that I can walk every day. And I either walk by the Supreme Court, depending on which way I go in my neighborhood, or I walk by the Library of Congress and I come around the corner and I see the Capitol. And um, honestly, it takes it really takes my breath away every time because um, as a child of an immigrant, um, you know, working class mom, being a queer her, queer American, I, I never imagined that I could be there. So I don't ever want to lose that. So there are moments when Honestly, uh, my friends and I will talk about it. We'll, we'll be sitting in caucus and we're like, oh, my God, AOC is sitting right in front of us. <laughs> or here comes Ayanna Presley. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, mm -hmm. or like I got to work with Jamie Raskin in, in oversight. The first time that I got to have a face to face conversation with him about the democracy. I mean, I can't even tell you how that feels. It feels like. I have been given this incredible opportunity and gift and responsibility, and I just want to get it right. I just want to get it right. Well, you know, we want to help you in any ways you think we can. You know, don't call me up anytime and text me, email me, Thanks, let Bruce. me know because, like, I'm boots on the ground like you. You know, I mean, all and so was Jenna. So, you want one last question? Go ahead. Oh. Something Which quick. To something, take. something quick. Something quick. Okay, <clears throat> I feel like it would be. Not right if we didn't talk about this, especially with me being a queer woman. I would just like to know how does it inform your politics being the first openly gay woman elected to Congress from Vermont? Yeah, I really appreciate the the question. I think about this a lot. Um, you know, when I was when I was in high school, I had absolutely no role models for um, queer women in office, and um, I have often said the only a uh, gay out politician I knew was a, a man named Harvey Milk, and he was a city supervisor in San Francisco, and he was he was assassinated. And that young person that I was knew I wanted to be in public service, but I didn't see a path. Mm -hmm. And um, so I have have said uh, repeatedly uh, to, to my team is that you know one of the jobs that we have to do is is make it easier for people coming up behind me so that I can help make it easier for queer people and trans people and 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 people of color and people uh, from from the rural pockets of Vermont who who never imagined that they could serve mm -hmm. that is a responsibility that I take really seriously um the, the other thing that I would say and again I'm getting that feedback again so if somebody over there can figure out why that'd be great um, but I had this amazing 
amazing dinner with the uh, vice president. And she invited uh, a core group of us from the caucus. And I got to sit next to and with some of the people I, I respect and admire so much in my caucus. So sitting right next to me was Summer Lee, uh, down the, the table was Greg Kassar, Robert Garcia was two, you know, two seats over. It was, you know, it was incredible to look at this table that looked like America. It absolutely looked like America. And, and Summer Lee is, she's hilarious. And she was sitting next to me, she said, she said, Becca, what's going on with you? And I said, I'm getting really teary. And she's like, ah, oh, you're always getting teary. I said, but look at us, oh, like, Lord. look at us. None of us imagine that we would be here. And here we are, and we are trying to do something different. We're trying to make it different. Um, the body itself, Congress different so that people see themselves represented. And, um, and I'll also tell you some days are really hard. Some days are really hard when I feel like my community is being attacked in the most horrible ways. But what I think about are the people back home that need me there to be speaking for for the community and be standing up to to the hatred and the fear mongering. And so that knowing that there are people that me, need me to do that uh, gives me gives me hope and courage. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Are you going to be around for um, my executive director for um, Human Rights Commission? Somebody Go down to the Pride Parade, September. Oh, 10th. great! But you know what? You know what, Becca? You know, you know, I'm, I identify a little di differently. You know, my pronouns are he, his, and him. But anyways, um, I go there like I don't know how many years I've been going down to the Pride. I'm telling you, what a, you know, what a venue down in the waterfront. My God, stage like stages are big and tense everywhere. It's like. It's a million dollar production, you know what I'm saying? It's like, it's so much Pride fun. is for everybody. Pride is for everybody. We want to see I you know. all in hey, Pride. You know, I'll be there. No doubt about it. So, Congresswoman <laughs> Becca Bell, thank you so much. Thank you. For being on a thank straight you. talk from our show. All right? So, tell, tell your staff, David, whatever, and let them know that a person who looks like me should be at every room, every event, everything you do. So, just put me on the list, sir. I'll come. You know what I'm saying? They need to see person. People need to see people like me you know, in Thank Vermont, you. you know. It don't have to be me, but somebody to look like me. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, so um, are you, where are you at right now? Where are you? I just, I had a meeting in Montpelier this morning oh, uh, talking about climate resiliency. Mm -hmm. And I think my next stop is we're driving down south to uh, visit some of the communities that were hard hit by, by the flooding. Mm -hmm. And we were there month or so ago, mm. we're going to come back around and see how mm. they're doing and see how the recovery is going. Nice. I'm like, you know, I'm just, I'm just like, I'm so proud, you know what I mean? I said, you got your hair all cut up and you did it all done up. <laughs> you're all done up. You, you're all done up. And you, wait, that, Bruce, I got to tell you, my, I've had the same hairstylist for over a decade. And when I got elected to Congress, she said, you're not going to get a new hairstylist, are you? <laughs> I was gonna get a cut in Brattleboro, so nice. they call this the they call this the Becca Balance. So oh, ooh, that's right. <laughs> I think I'm the Tell only one who has it, but they call it the Becca Balance. So, so. I'm gonna put the Congresswoman in front of it, though. For real, for real. Okay, you. All right. All right. I, I think got I your got back. Well, thank, thank you, you so, so much, much for tuning in. So we so we nice have to do another show, both. right? All right, Becca. See you at Pride. Somewhere down the line. Okay. All right, bye, bye, bye everybody. Thank mm -hmm. you for tuning in. Straight Talk Vermont Show.